Nothing brings people together like a delicious meal. I'm Diana Reese, and I've had the pleasure for the last several years of bringing people great food as a caterer, food blogger, and creator of Hottie Biscotti. My philosophy is simple. Start with the classics, add a modern twist, keep an eye on presentation, and you will make impressive meals. Join us as we explore the recipes, flavors, and styles that will make your next gathering delicious by design. We're going to get started on our braised Italian meatballs and red sauce. This is the quintessential Italian food. If any of you know anything about Italian people, every Sunday you go to grandma's house and this is what you get. You get meatballs, you get noodles, you get big salads and something wonderful for dessert. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got my pot working right here and I'm going to get a little olive oil down and we're going to break up our onion and our garlic. First thing we're going to do is get our garlic all chopped. I like to kind of hack up my onion into pieces and peel it apart. Makes it really easy to get it down quickly. Little trick I learned is put my palm on the onion, slice through, give it a little chop in the other direction. And there we go, we have a nice dice. You're gonna need a whole onion for this recipe. It's really important to remember when you're making red sauce that you want to layer in the flavors. So every layer that we add adds a lot of flavor, a lot of richness, because we're going to use this not just to dress our noodles, but also to braise our meatballs. So funny story, this is like the smallest pot of sauce I have ever made. This little pot right here, so little. If I make sauce, I make like three gallons sitting on two burners here. <laughs> my uh, grandparents are gonna see this and they're gonna wonder what I'm doing because nobody in my family's ever cooked this little sauce. I think one of my uncles will be able to take this whole meal down for himself by himself. All right here. So we're gonna give this a little stir and get these softened up. So we're gonna get these till they're nice and translucent and we're gonna get our garlic. You don't wanna throw your garlic in as the, at the same time as your onions. Garlic's a little more sensitive and it gets a burn taste and it'll make your whole pot of sauce taste bitter if it burns. So you wanna be really careful. So I'm pulling out two cloves of garlic here, smashing them up. I think one just shot behind me. That's one of the hazards of, you know, cooking for a big family is you gotta work a little bit fast. As a caterer, I work really fast. I cook for a few hundred people every week and uh, shoots everywhere and you just kinda get them off when you're done. <laughs> so run your knife through this really quick. You don't need to be super precise. The nice thing about what I'm showing you is none of this is gonna be precision work. This is chop it, drop it, get it going. So we've got our garlic in now. Again, giving it a little stir. That's nice and hot. Getting a nice pile of stuff here. You want to salt when you salt this layer right here. You want to use about half the salt we have. It's going to take about two to three tablespoons of salt to season your whole pot of pasta. You don't want to overdo it with the salt. You're going to add salt to your meatballs and then cook them down in the sauce and so you're going to get salt from multiple places. Um, I've got a little bit of granulated garlic here. I'm going to use about half. This is about two, two tablespoons, so we're going to use about a tablespoon. It seems a little funny that I'm layering garlic and onion on top of garlic and onion, but the dry spices add a whole different element and it's all about layering in the flavor because you really want this to be a rich, flavorful sauce. So that's about a tablespoon of granulated onion. I'm going to take just about a teaspoon of oregano, two tablespoons or so of parsley, 
we're going to mix this all together. And you're going to see the spices are going to brown up and kind of reconstitute in the olive oil and juices from the, from the onion. Next step is you want to get down some red wine. The important thing about red wine is you can be cheap so long as you're willing to drink it. It'll be good sauce, really good sauce. I know in my house there's always an open bottle. Whatever was half drunk the night before, perfect for making sauce the next day. You want to take about five minutes and let this just reduce and get the full flavor of the wine worked into the onions and the garlic. Once we let this reduce, we're going to add some chicken broth. Then we're going to add our tomatoes. This is two large cans of uh, pureed tomatoes from the grocery store. And you might think, so you've seen me use a few things, dry ingredients, which may seem a little odd because a lot of chefs like to use fresh ingredients. I love fresh ingredients, but the dry ingredients add a lot of stability to a recipe. You don't have to worry about whether or not this particular onion has the same flavor as the last one you've used. Also, they tend to be a little more pungent because they've been dehydrated and all of those flavors have come down into those tiny little granules and they get reconstituted with your broth and tomatoes. So I've stirred this up. I'm going to add a few things for richness here. I'm going to add a tablespoon of tomato paste. It's going to give a little extra punch. I'm going to add a little butter. This is a little secret my grandmother taught me. And the butter takes a little bit of the acidity out of the tomatoes and it just makes everything stick to your pasta just right. So once that butter gets melted, really that's everything you need to do except for taste and re-season. So I'm going to give it a little taste. This is the most important thing to do while you cook. Taste. Taste at every stage, taste, 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 because you can always fix something. It's pretty good. We need a little more salt, probably another teaspoon of salt. I think a little, just a little bit more of everything, a little bit of pepper, granulated garlic, onion, pinch of oregano. Go easy on the oregano. It's very strong. Parsley as well. It adds wonderful color and texture. Give it a little stir. I want to take a look at that, how those ingredients are incorporating. You want to make sure you stir it until your dehydrated spices are fully integrated. Okay, so last things last, we want to give it another taste. Just right. It's not fully done. Once you have it cooked for about a half an hour, then you're going to see the full flavors come together. But at this phase, you want to make sure you taste all the spices and the tomatoes and everything's got a nice even keel. Now that our sauce has come together, we're gonna get started on the most important part, our Italian braised meatballs. Pecan Ridge Plantation pecan oil is great for sauteing or grilling seafood. It's even excellent for pan searing a steak. Use Pecan Ridge Plantation pecan oil for all your cooking and oil application needs. The product is 100% natural. Their oil is cold pressed, which means no heat or harmful chemicals have been used. It has a very high flash point of 470 degrees, making it ideal for frying or heating up to high temperatures. Great to use on salad dressings, for sauteing, marinating, seasoning, grilling, and even baking. It can be used as a butter substitute. Use as you would on any other oil. Light buttery nutty flavor that does not alter the flavor of the dish tremendously. However, it simply complements the other ingredients which is being used and adds moisture and richness to the recipe. Pecan Ridge Plantation Pecan Oil has less saturated fat than olive oil, only 7% compared to 14%. It's high in vitamin E and monosaturated healthy fats. There's no cholesterol or sodium. No oily aftertaste, very light and clean flavor. So for the next time you're thinking about using a quality olive oil, lean towards Pecan Ridge Plantation Pecan Oil. And for more information, log on to PecanRidgePlantation.com. Okay, now we're going to get started on our braised Italian meatballs. Let's go over what we have here. We have about a pound of ground beef. 
Get the 80-20 because you want some fat in this. You want to be able to make a nice, rich, hearty meatball. And then we also have a little bit of ground Italian sausage. I always get the spicy. Nice thing about adding sp sausage to your meatball is that you get a little bit of flavor from it. It's already spiced, it's already got some seasoning, so you have another layer of flavor. I've got a little trick for you because when you get your hands in the meat and then you don't want to go back to your spices, so I start like this. I put my breadcrumb in the bottom and that's about a half a cup. I have, uh, when I put half of my Parmesan cheese, very important to get some cheese in your meatballs, adds a little salt as well. A little salt, we're going to get this all flavored up, ground pepper, and back to our core spices that we use in our sauce. A little bit of granulated garlic, granulated onion, parsley, and a pinch of oregano. Give this a little stir. All right, and now we can get in with our meat. We're going to add our hamburger. Get your hands right in there. You don't want to be afraid of this. You're going to get quite messy. Okay, we're going to get our sausage. And my little secret here is wine. The same wine I used for my sauce. See how we're matching up all our flavors and getting everything nice and layered. It's about a half a cup of wine. We're going to give this some richness and moisture with that wine. So we have to have a way to get all of this to stick together. I've got two eggs here. We're going to just give those a crack. And now for the fun part. There's no spoons, there's no neat way around this. You're gonna have to get your hands in there. This used to be what my great grandmother would give me as a job, mixing meatballs. <laughs> and it's pretty fun. So you see how I'm working everything around? You really wanna make sure you pick up all of the breadcrumb off the bottom. You see the sausage get combined with the hamburger. Make sure your entire bowl kind of looks like one homogenous blob of meat. That's not very pretty, but it does. It is the way it goes. It's, this is the, uh, the ugly before we get the beautiful here. Okay, I'm gonna set these bowls aside and show you a little trick for rolling these out without having them stick to your hands, because that's the worst thing here. So also, great-grandmother taught this to me. You want to rub a little bit of lukewarm water on your hands. And we kind of just make a guess when we're portioning these out. Once you get the size you want, just try and make them all the same. We're going to put them on an ungreased cookie sheet. So we're just going to keep working through this. It takes a little bit of time, but this is the most labor intensive part of our meal. But it's also the heart of the meal. This is everything we are working towards <laughs> right here delicious meatballs. This is what people are going to look at and say, oh yeah, I want to come back to her house for dinner. <laughs> Funny story, so everybody eats this. Everybody eats meatballs, spaghetti. It's, you know, pretty ingrained in our, our culture, not just Italian. But I don't think people do it, always do it that well, you know? They always buy the pre-made meatballs and put them in the oven or they get the jar of sauce and so when you serve this, I've had this experience where people look at this and they're just like, oh, getting Italian meatballs and sauce. This doesn't look that exciting. And then by the end of the meal, they're practically licking their plates. <laughs> so I'm roll finishing up rolling these out. A little trick when you're at home, feel free to cover your pan with foil. It'll save you a lot of washing. I am not a big fan of washing dishes, as my husband can tell you. Rules in our house, if you cook, you don't clean. I always, always, always cook. <laughs> All right, last couple here. Tend to get a little bigger as you go because you get bored with making them. <laughs> Try and get them all on the same pan. They will shrink a little. So you don't have to worry about getting them too far apart, but you also don't want your pan uh, getting overcrowded so they don't cook evenly. Here we go. We've got these all rolled out. We're going to pop them in the oven at 350 for about 15 minutes. You want to make sure they get a nice golden brown. While these are working, we're going to work on our Italian green salad with real deal homemade dressing. Mother Earth products are a delicious variety of foods that are dry. Mother Earth products can be taken anywhere. On vacation, activities, world travels, the cellar, the basement, the kitchen table, 
Hey, why not stock up on all these dried foods and put them in your cabinet? Choose from any one of their varieties, like beans, dried vegetables, entrees, freeze-dried fruits, freeze-dried vegetables, food storage supplies, grains, cereals, and mixes, and a whole lot more. Mother Earth's products are perfect to store foods later and then use them at a certain period of time by rehydrating them in water or your favorite stock mixture. For more information about Mother Earth's products, log on to MotherEarthsProducts.com. Okay, we're going to make our Italian green salad now with real deal dressing. It's a very important part of the meal because when you're having something heavy like Italian meatballs, you really want to have something kind of vinegary and light to break up the meal and have a fully balanced meal. So I handle my produce ahead of time, so really proper handling of this makes a big difference. I rinsed all my lettuce and removed the ends and then peeled my carrot, cucumber and got my radishes ends tipped and put everything in a bowl of ice water. This really brought it all to life and make, to make sure we get really good crunch in our salad. So I'm going to get started assembling. This is red and green head lettuce. So this is really easy to find at the grocery store. We don't have to add anything too fancy to this. It's just important that you get red and green lettuce and I used about a half of a head each. So this is, this has a lot more flavor than some of the other lettuces when you open a bag. So this little extra bit of work really is going to take it to the next level. Okay, so you can break down your lettuce pretty fast by bundling it all up. I like to run my knife through vertically and then pull it all back together. Use your great big knife to work it through horizontally. We've got nice bite-sized pieces of lettuce. Use your fingertips and kind of roll your lettuce back into your hands as it gets, gets away from you. Going to layer this down in our nice big bowl. We want to have family style bowls for all of our meals today because we're going to feed a group of at least four or five people. If you have a good sized family, this goes a long way. All right, we take our cucumber, get a whole cucumber here, slice it down the middle, line them up, and get little half moons here. All right. So I move through things pretty quickly. If you're just getting started, but don't worry about moving through as quickly as I do. Take your time, get comfortable with your knife, get comfortable with your ingredients. Everything improves with time. Don't let anything I do scare you off. Because really, this is, these are meals that anybody can do. I like to think that anybody can be a great cook. Your kitchen is your domain. So we'll get to our carrot now. Same thing with the cucumber. I like nice, big chunks of carrot. Woo, that one gave me a little bit of a hard time. All right, and again, half moons. Carrot adds a little bit of sweetness, lots of good crunch. Everything about a salad is about the texture, the crunch, and then that nice vinegar that rounds everything out. Quick tomato here. Focus on, uh, this is aroma tomato, but focus on whatever's local in your grocery store um, or uh, whatever's ripe at the time. Make sure some, it's nice and red. Otherwise, you don't want to get a tomato that tastes like water. Okay, got all that layered down. A little bit of bite and spice from our radishes here. And again, breaking it down into little half moons. Here we go. It's always the last thing I do when I'm preparing for company. Uh, getting all my salad together in, an, in ice water on the table and then right before everyone sits down, put everything together, get it to the table nice and fresh. Okay, let's clear our board a little bit. All right, and we're gonna make Italian dressing. This I learned from my grandfather. I make it for all of my catering jobs when they ask for Italian green salad. And this dressing is the real deal here. So we start with ketchup. And that sounds a little funny, but it's sweet. It's got a little bit of a tang to it. Mustard, this comes up in a lot of uh, French vinaigrettes to have a little bit of mustard. That was about a teaspoon of each. Uh, we're gonna do salt. 
pepper, onion, garlic, parsley, and a little more parsley, and oregano. And you notice I've gone back to the same handful of spices over and over again. As we make our meal, we're layering all this together, we're gonna eat it all together, but those spices are the core of my kitchen. That is the Italian flavor right there. So a little bit of olive oil, it's about a quarter cup, and a half a cup of vinegar. Now, I like a vinegary dressing. I do not like to have my salad covered in olive oil. I really wanna taste the bite of the vinegar. So we're gonna give this a little mix. Make sure it's all combined. Again, we use dry spices instead of fresh. They reconstitute and have a much stronger flavor. Get a look at that, that's so nice. And the most important thing of all, a little taste to make sure you've got it right. Perfect balance. I'm gonna lay it down over our green salad here. And then we're gonna set this aside while we get finished up with our Italian meatballs. Hi, I'm Chef Joe Simonero with Taste This Television here to talk to you about Accelerator Hand Dryer. You know, keeping up with hygiene, washing my hands, and making sure that there's no transfer of bacteria is important for me and Taste This TV, which is why I rely on a machine like Accelerator to dry my hands. It's efficient, it's strong, and it's powerful. And it only uses up electricity and energy when you put your hands under and take them away. So for drying my hands in the kitchen, I rely on the Accelerator to handle all of those needs. For more information, log on to the website at the bottom of the screen. Okay, we're gonna finish up our meatballs here. I'm gonna let you know, I put on some water for our pasta. We're gonna cook a little fettuccine. I know usually it's spaghetti and meatballs, but I like a broad noodle because it holds the sauce just a little bit better. So we're gonna add these meatballs in. I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. We're only gonna add about half to this pot. This is why I always make an extra big pot because half of these we're gonna save for tomorrow to make a meatball sub. So when you get done, put a few in a bowl. You're going to cut them in half, lay them over a sub roll with a little bit of provolone cheese, add a little bit of your marinara that you saved today and pop it in the oven and toast it. Great lunch. All this work and you get two meals out of it. Awesome. So set this aside and we're gonna give this a stir. You really want your meatballs in here nice and covered. You can see as I pick them up, they're gonna pick up all of that sauce flavor, get nice and rich. And this is what we're gonna lay on the top of our pasta and finish with Parmesan cheese. We're gonna let our meatballs sit in our sauce, taking up all that rich flavor. It takes about a half an hour to get them fully, fully cooked and full of flavor. We're gonna move on now to our sweet finish, a deconstructed biscotti tiramisu. So we're gonna get started on our deconstructed biscotti tiramisu. I've done a few things already. I measured out my ingredients and the base of this recipe is a pint of whipped cream. Um, I already took the liberty of whipping it up and we added two tablespoons of sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla. We're gonna use this for all three stages of our tiramisu. And I'm going to start out by reserving a little bit of the cream for our topping. And then I'm gonna take the remainder and divide it in two. So we have two flavors of mousse that we're making to make this tiramisu. And so we're gonna get a couple of essential flavors in here. When you make a tiramisu, you wanna have a cheese flavor, the mascarpone cheese. You wanna have whipped cream. You wanna get a little coffee. And I like to add a little amaretto. And then for our cookies, instead of those soft lady fingers, we're gonna go with a nice haughty biscotti for the crunch. Rich almond flavor and great crunch. All right, we've got our cream divided out. The next step is how to make our mousse. We're gonna make a chocolate amaretto mousse. And to melt our chocolate, we're gonna start with a double boiler. I'm gonna put my amaretto down and put my chocolate in after. When you're melting your chocolate over a double boiler, it's very important to add your liquid right at the beginning. Otherwise, you risk seizing up the chocolate by adding cold liquid. So it's nice and soft and we turned off our heat. I'm going to give it a little stir and grab a towel to get this hot liquid off. There we go. Always watch your fingers when you're working with hot things over the stove. So we're gonna smooth this out, get the liquid fully incorporated and give it a nice smell. The amaretto is delicious. We're incorporating that great almond flavor into our semi-sweet chips. That was about a half a cup of chips. Now, it's a little bit on the hot side to add directly to our cream. So while we're waiting for this to cool off just a touch, we're gonna work on our mascarpone mousse layer. So the mascarpone 
We're going to mix our mascarpone and espresso mousse. We've got a nice bowl here to work in. Let me grab one of our spatulas. Here we go, we're gonna get the mascarpone in. Now this is just a really strong brewed coffee. You can buy espresso, you can use the coffee that you have in your cupboard and just brew it extra, extra strong. Three or four times the strength that you would normally use for coffee in the morning. All right, we're gonna whisk this together. Be careful not to let it break up over your edge. All right, come on. So, Sometimes it's a little bit easier to start the mascarpone first, thinking ahead. Work your finger in there and get the good stuff out. You don't want to lose any of that delicious, cheesy flavor. All right, so that is our mascarpone base, mascarpone espresso. We have a little bit of vanilla to add to that and just a touch of sugar to sweeten it up. There we go. All right, get our hands clean. Our chocolate should be cool enough to add to our mousse. So we're going to lay this down. So when you're making mousse, it's important to add a little bit of the warm stuff at a time and just fold. Gently, gently fold. Fold this in. You wanna make sure it gets fully incorporated. It's important to fold and not stir because you can break your cream. Okay, so we're working on this. It's getting pretty close. There we go. You're starting to see the rest of that chocolate get in there. Scrape down your sides and make sure you're not leaving out any of your cream. It's okay if you have a few little streaks. If you're making mousse, this is the secret right here, is getting it folded in nice and even. All right, that's our chocolate. Now adding our mascarpone and espresso. There we go. I'm going to use the same spatula here. It's all going to end up in the same bowl at the end. Okay, and again, making mousse. So we just made two kinds of mousse. If you have never made mousse, you've now learned the technique. It's essentially adding a nice, rich flavor to heavily whipped cream. Okay, now a quick tip on how to plate this. I am going to take my chocolate layer first and lay it in the bottom of a cocktail glass. Try to be a little bit neat about it, but you can always wipe down the sides. There we go. See, nice color, nice type. It's gonna be delicious. Okay, and then, because we want a layered dessert, tiramisu is always a layered dessert, some of our chopped up biscotti. You wanna make sure that you get enough in there that you get some crumbs every single time. Okay, then we're gonna to top it with our mascarpone and espresso layer. There we go. Be very generous, this is delicious. You may wanna share it, but I wouldn't. Again, we're gonna wipe down our sides. Last touch. There you go, right before you serve, a dollop of cream and a healthy, healthy serving of, tier, of biscotti. And there you have it, our delicious deconstructed biscotti tiramisu. Now let's get ourselves ready to enjoy our delicious family style dinner. We finished up and we have a great meal any Italian will be proud of. Our braised meatballs over fettuccine, green salad with real deal homemade dressing, deconstructed biscotti tiramisu. Be prepared to have fun, get messy, and have your family to the table. I'm Diana Reese and this is Delicious by Design. Thanks for watching.